I'm Dale Going. I'm Stephanie Green. I'm Amber Bennett. And we're doing our presentation on unhealthy accounting and how south. Some background information on uh, Health South. It was founded in 1984 by Richard Scrushy and Tony Tanner. Uh, the first evidence of fraud began in 1996 by overestimating insurance reimbursements, overstating fixed assets, improper capitalization expenses, and overbooking reserve accounts. Uh, the concerns were ignored by the auditors, Ernst and Young, and fraud amassed over $2.7 billion. Uh, red flags, there were several red flags that uh, could have been, that, that were there that the auditor didn't, didn't pick up. One was a turnover to CFO position. And the text, they were talking about the five CFOs who pled guilty to fraud. I don't know how many CFOs the place had during this period of time, but that's a lot of turnover. Anytime a CFO has turnover like that, that should be a red flag. There's problems within the organization. Uh, the ignoring of whistleblowers. The whistleblowers uh, were ignored. And they were labeled as disgruntled employees or disgruntled former employees. Income up 500%, revenue up only 5%. That was the biggest red flag. If your income's up 500%, your revenue should have a uh, percentage increase with revenue. That was, should have been the biggest red flag that wasn't, well, that was ignored. But the internal auditors not having access to the corporate books uh, should have been another red flag that, that there's something wrong. All in all, these red flags are, is a telling story of what happened. Uh, under audit procedures, the understanding of the process and the test of controls is an important thing for your auditor. Uh, these are procedures that auditors can perform to detect fraudulent entries made during the consolidation process. SAS number 99 was uh, developed to help auditors and they give them kind of a work, uh, not a worksheet, but a uh, diagram on how to look for stuff. Uh, three things that caught my mind when I was doing this was the use of professional skepticism. Make sure that you at all times uh, are use skepticism when you're when you're talking to people and looking over things. Brainstorming among, among engagement personnel. Uh, this is to help new team members on how an entity may conceal and perpetrate fraud. Uh, another thing it sets a tone from the top on how the audit will be performed. Uh, number three is obtain information to identify the risk of fraud. Question your management and other personnel about their awareness and risk of fraud. Uh, using analytical procedures that look for data and isolation from the past. Okay, number three is how can artists determine a company's true tone at the top? Tone at the top refers to an ethical atmosphere that is created in the workplace by organization leadership. Whatever tone the management set, it will have a trickle down effect on the employees of the company. If those, if the tone is set by the manager uphold ethic and integrity, then the employees will be more inclined to do the same. However, if the manager appears unconcerned with ethics and forces um, focus solely on the bottom line, employees will more likely commit fraud because they feel that the um, ethical conduct is not a focus or priority within the organization. Um, certain things, certain things that um, artists can do is the first thing is they can um, do interviews for the top leaders. They can ask questions like, "How active is the artist committee? Um, how is the board compensated? Um, what pressures are on the employees for making?" sales and earning goals. Um, they can do employee surveys, they can do group, um, group discussion where the employees can sit and talk freely amongst themselves about different things that go on in the organization. They can do incident reports where um, they can call in um, anonymously and voice their opinion on something and they can have it looked at. Um, they can do facility visits where they can go in and see how the management actually interact with their employees. They can do focus group and exit interviews because in most exit interviews, the employee at that point is leaving the company so they really don't care about rating someone out. Okay, the next question was, 
what is the appropriate response by auditors to information from misbound employees. Uh, misbound employees can also be considered whistleblowers in more official terms, and although auditors may take information from misbound employees with some skepticism, they should take it very seriously and still conduct an investigation on their claim. They should still conduct the investigation even if they have not detected any frauds themselves, because most of the time, a tip from employees will help the um, auditors find fraud more than if they did it on their own. With the um, disgruntled employee, they should take the claim to the audit committee because it's also the audit committee's responsibility to take claims from the whistleblower hotline, and they can compare those claims to see if it's a, a, a true claim. And the SEC also takes whistleblowing very seriously because they have several op opportunities to protect those that make the claim. Clients may bring suit um, for against the uh, auditors for breach of contract and other tort actions, and auditors may attempt to mitigate these client claims through the use of the following three defenses. First, auditors, um, a defense auditors exercise the appropriate level of professional care or perform the engagement in accordance with the terms of the contract. The second is a causation defense, stating that the client's economic loss was caused by a factor other than the auditor's failure to exercise appropriate levels of professional care or breach of contract. And the last one is contributory, contributory negligence, meaning the actions on part of the client were in part responsible for the loss. EY's defense is against the class action suit. One is the Class Action Fairness Act. This was enacted in February 2005, and it was designed to expand the federal jurisdiction. If the perception of this is that it would reduce class action lawsuits, and it will provide a more impartial venue for auditors to defend themselves. Client liability and defenses would follow the same under common and statutory law, and the motion to dismiss or settle um, well, in an event that auditors can't get a motion to, dis to dismiss, they often settle to avoid the risk of big damage claims. For improved sampling, you can uh, select a random sample of transactions below as well as above 5,000. Also, change selection process each year. Um, for example, every 77th transaction this year, then every 45th transaction the following year, and so forth. Next, request supporting documentation for question transactions from third parties and visually inspect the assets. The conclusion, uh, 15 Health South employees pled guilty. On June 2005, Scrooge was found not guilty on all counts. And June 2006, Scrooge was found guilty in separate bribery scheme and sentenced to seven years. 